here at Design Con this year? What was the biggest thing that you were going to take away from? At Design Con, it, it's, it's awesome. Every year I come back, I see a lot of the experts in the industry that you know, when you're busy at work and you've got your your different projects and things going on, you don't always remember to call these people or email them or check in with them. And DesignCon's a great opportunity because you bump into the hallways, you see their papers, uh, you get to team up with uh, people like Steve Sandler of PicoTest and do great things like a Power Integrity Boot Camp with over uh, 120 people all doing uh, working on simulations and listening to lectures on power integrity. But I think the, the in terms of what I learn, you know, it, it also stimulates me to remember things I've learned in the past. And it, it really highlights the important ones. Today we had a paper on um, uh, fixture removal. And I was reminding myself about how I love the unknown through calibration in order to get really stable, reliable calibrations. And with pow power integrity, uh, same sort of thing. There's, there's a two port shunt impedance measurement and I get to do a lot of those here at DesignCon and demonstrate to customers and, and uh, people that are interested in listening. If you think over the past year, what is it that you think you've done with ADS that, that helped customers and, and how, did, how did it help them do what they do better? One of the things I'm working very hard with is to figure out how do we enable uh, people to do their job better? How do we give them the insights they need so that design becomes faster, so that they can pick up a tool and maybe they haven't used it before, but they know what they, the application, they know the methodology they want to implement, and so it makes it much easier to learn a tool. It's amazing to me to watch someone who's an expert in industry and you hand them a tool that they haven't used before, a simulation software, and they instantly know how to use it because they know what they need to get done. And so one of our, our goals with the Power Integrity Bootcamp was not to do the latest, most complicated, sophisticated simulation that we can to show them how great and, and wonderful uh, uh, some tool is, but to give them the basic uh, simulation capabilities, to start giving them insight and give them a methodology to follow so that when they get to the end of that methodology, they have all the, the tools and the insights and the, uh, uh, I guess I would say, confidence to actually then embark upon a very sophisticated and uh, complicated simulation that will really predict and tell them what's happening with their electrical circuits. So what's next? What's, what's the next big thing that's going to unlock something for these uh, engineers and help them do what they do better? I, I still believe that making it more commonplace and making it faster and easier to use EM models of printed circuit boards and getting better circuit models of say the, the like state space average models for switching converters, um, DC to DC converters, getting the, the, I guess I would say higher fidelity models and being able to integrate all of that efficiently is where I think we need to go next because lumped spice models aren't going to cut it for the future. One thing I noticed at DesignCon this year is that when you look around, there aren't many young people here. And it's a little bit scary, but if the young people are sitting here, what would you say to them? What, what do you think the young people are missing? And what would you give them as advice on what they should be doing to prepare for their um, you know, upcoming career in engineering? That, you know, that's a tough question as to why you don't see younger people. Uh, I think that for one thing, a lot of the stuff that we're working on here, the very the latest in signal integrity and power integrity and some of those applications, take a tremendous amount of, of experience. And the other one, I would encourage them, I love the physics behind that. The, the, you know, you're down there understanding uh, exactly how the circuits work. You're not at the higher level, um, you know, uh, you know it, it's not the software level of things. You're down there actually learning how the physics of electronics work. And, I, I hope to see more people into that. I think the automotive industry is starting to see that in the sense that I, you know, ICE engines used to be, you know, passe, not very interesting to work on. They had trouble finding engineers to, to come and do that business. And now with, with um, you know, autonomous driving and, and electric cars, uh, I bet every young engineer out there is thinking about that industry. So I, I hope to see that same sort of thing happen with our industry. Uh, it just, you know, it, it goes through cycles. 
make a time machine that you can go back in time. What do you think you would do differently in the development of your career? Is it something that you didn't pay attention to that you would have? Is there something that you would have wished you learned that you didn't? What would you change if you could go back in time? If I could go back in time, I probably would have spent more time really understanding the math. Math is like a language, you know, French, German, English. And you, the more time you use it, and the more people you converse with uh, using it, the better you get with it. And I think sometimes I get frustrated because my math language, uh, I don't practice it enough. And there's so much information in, in like the Fourier transform from time domain to frequency domain. It's just, uh, it, it's a tremendous uh, tool for the signal integrity and power integrity industry. And it's just a, a lot of that math is, is not uh, trivial. And so I, uh, that's one thing I wish I had paid more attention to my math classes in, in college. It's funny because I think, you know, when I look back, I slept through my EM classes. And it was like, I'm going to be an electrical engineer. What the hell am I going to do with EM? <laughs>